Good morning children. Today our topic is sorting materials into groups. So there are so many materials around us. If you just look at your around you, you will find so many materials, so many things around us. If you are in a classroom, you can find so many things, blackboard, chalk piece or marker, eraser, benches, tables, charts, wall clock, tube lights, fan. So likewise, you find so many things around you. If you come out of the classroom, just if you enter the ground, you find so many things, so many sports items. You may find balls and bats, rackets, shuttlecocks. So likewise, you will find different kind of things. If you go to your principal room, then you will find so many things. You will find a table, a chair, you may, you may find a globe, you may find a paperweight, you may find some of the stationery, some files. So likewise. So here in this lesson, we are going to talk about how to group the different things that we see around us. How to group them, how the grouping is done. Before that, we need to know the importance of grouping. What is the necessity of grouping? Why should we group the things? Grouping always helps us in which way? Grouping always helps us to study the things in a better way, to study the things in an easiest way. I will give you an example. Say for example, you are going to study about different things. So you are going to just know about cola, coca cola. Just you wanted to know about Pepsi thumbs up. So you find all these are similar. So you grouped them all under soft drinks. You kept all the brands Pepsi, Coca Cola, thumbs up, so Fanta, Maza, all this you kept one category. So there you have studied one particular thing. You have taken Coke and you studied it. Right. So what you studied it, it is a water based soft drink. It is mixed with some sweetener and it is added with some flavor and it is added with some carbon dioxide. So it is a carbonated water with a sweetener with a specific flavor. So whatever you have studied about that particular one is applied to all the other things also. You need not study the next one, next one because all are similar. So that is the importance of grouping. The importance of grouping is that if you study the properties of one particular thing, so the other things which are similar to this, you need not study about each and every one separately in detail. You can apply this to that all. In general, you can apply. Maybe in specific, you may know some other differences. There may be some little differences, but mostly they will be having the same general properties. Right? So the items that are made up of paper, they will have similar proper properties. Book is made up of paper. Right? A booklet is a newspaper is made up of paper, a newspaper and book, two different items, but they are made up of paper. So paper exhibit the same property. What is that property? It becomes wet if you put some water. If you light it, it will, it will burn to ashes. So it has the similar property, whether it is in the form of a book or in the form of a paper. Right? So. When you group all the things that are made up of paper, if you study the properties of one thing that is applied to all. If a paper, it burns by lighting, a book also burns by lighting. The similarity, right? So that is the necessity of grouping. So here, uh, let us see, we have written so many items here on the board. A school bag, book, writing pad, pen, screwdriver, board, scissors, glass bowl, paper clip, ruler, pencil, ping pong ball. Eraser, CD, watch, water bottle, pencil box and gloves. So all these are the different items. So somebody asked you to group these things. So these are the things given to you and you are asked to group them. How you are going to group? So we will pick up some property or some character on which we will make them into groups. Which property you can pick up? Anything you can pick up. Here you are... Uh, you wanted to segregate them on basing the property shape, the first one shape. You have chosen shape. 
So on basing the shape, you would like to keep all the round ones one side and flat ones one side or rectangular or square ones on one side and circular or round ones on the other side. Rectangular, square, circular. So what is round here? Round. So in your idea CD, you can write to take the CD here and what else is here? And uh, clock, sorry, lock, lock may be like this. So you may consider this lock as also round. And uh, what else you can take here? So that's all. You don't have anything else here. If you wanted to pick the ones that are in rectangular shape or square shape, you can take the book. You can take the board. And you can take the ruler and you can take the eraser and you can take the pencil box, writing pad. So all these things that are either in the form of a square or a rectangle, square or a rectangle. So likewise you can segregate. But here is a confusion. So you separated some items. CD is round. These items which we have marked those are rectangular or square. What about the other things paper clip? So if you take the property shape, it is not possible to segregate all because certain shapes are confusing. They don't have a specific shape, right? They don't have a specific shape. So how do you classify it? So there is a problem. That means you can take any character, any property you can use to separate the items, separate the materials, segregate the materials, group the materials. But you should see that the property which you are picking up, it should do the justice. It should solve the whole thing, not half of the thing. Here only a few things are classified. Many of the things were left unclassified because you have picked up the property shape. Right? So you can take the second one purpose. You can classify the things on basing the purpose, how they are used. So here I have looked at these and I wanted to segregate them. Many of these items I feel like they are used for schooling in your classroom for study purpose. So I am classifying the things that are useful for study purpose. School bag, book, writing pad, pencil, pencil box, pen and uh, eraser, CD, water bottle, paper clip, scissors, ruler, board, water bottle, most of the things. But even then, Sometimes, if you are doing these kind of grouping, you may not be knowing the purpose of certain items. You don't know what is that item even. You don't know the purpose of it. Sometimes, the objects, they may not be used for a single purpose. Right? How can I say that roller is used only for the study purpose? The ruler may be used by anybody to measure anything. So, it may be used in carpentry, it may be used in engineering, it may be used by a tailor. So, there is a confusion, right? So you have to put it in so many places. In the same way, eraser also, how can you say that it is only used in uh, learning purpose? So on basing the purpose also, we can classify the things, okay? Right? But there also there is some, there will be some confusion in classifying. You cannot do it completely, right? But here you get an idea how to classify the things. You can classify the things on basing any property. Depending upon your requirement, you can pick up the things that are made up of either paper or wood. You can easily pick up. You can pick up the things that are made up of plastic. What are the things made up of plastic? Pencil box is made up of plastic. Gloves are made up of plastic. And a CD is made up of plastic. Water bottle and a ruler. Right, pen, these items are made up of plastic. In the same way, you can pick up the items which are made up of wood. So when you see the things around you, you can use all these ideas. The shape, the purpose, the weight, all these ideas. Heavy objects, light objects. Okay. Right. On basing that, you can separate them. Here we have come to the idea material. By which material they are made up of on basing that you can classify. This is more systematic. 
classifying the things on basing the materials with which they are made up of is a very systematic classification, good classification. Items made up of plastic, items made up of iron, items made up of paper, items made out of wood, this is a better classification. Right? So, this is systematic. So, how do we know that with which material they are made up of? Generally, if you study about the materials, you will be learning about the materials in your school level or college level about different metals and non-metals and different materials and their properties. So, you will be knowing that what sort of materials are used to make different objects. And even it is very simple that when you look at some object, you will be easily identifying with what material that is made up of. So, you might be holding the smartphone, uh, smartphones these days. You can see the smartphone and say that what materials are used in making that. The outer case is made out of plastic. The surface is made up with a glass, tempered glass. So, likewise you will be able to identify the materials. Right. So, classifying the things on basing the materials used is more systematic. Now, you can draw a table and you can write each object and with what, what material it is made up of. You can write the pencil box made out of plastic, take the lock made out of metal, either steel or brass, the lock is made up of steel or brass or iron. You can take pen, it is made up of plastic, eraser, it is made up of a material called rubber, right? And glass bowl, it is made up of a material called glass. Glass is the material. Screwdriver, it is made up of a combination of steel as well as with a plastic handle. And a board, a board is made up of wood. Scissors is made up of a metal. Roller is made up of either wood. Uh, wooden rollers are available as well as plastic rollers are available. And a watch is made up of plastic casing inside the metal machine and uh, water bottle is made out of plastic either plastic or metal so here now we could do we could touch each and everything here we didn't leave anything of course sometimes you might not be knowing exactly what it is generally if you see certain items you find it is plastic but there are so many number of plastics but with a naked eye just with a touch we cannot identify and tell that what kind of type of plastic it is it need to be tested to know what kind of plastic it is exactly Anyway, but we can identify it is a plastic. How do we identify it is plastic because of its properties? How do we identify it is wood because of its properties, its hardness, its bending, its stretching? So, all these tests we will come to know in the higher classes what are the different properties. In your higher classes you will learn how do steel items behave, how do gold items behave, how do copper items and silver items behave. So, the various properties of the metals and all these things. Right, but here we have taken one point that classifying the objects on basing the materials by which they are made up of is a systematic way of sorting the things. So, sorting materials into groups. So, we are sorting these materials into different different groups. So, now let us see the link between the objects and materials. Right. So, here we understood that the objects around us, they are made up of certain materials. We can sort or group the objects on basing the material by which they are made up of. Right. So, different objects are made up of different materials. Here we are going to see, here we are going to observe one, notice one thing that here I have listed out of the objects on this side and materials on the other side. Let us take one object here, chain. Chair is an object, it is made up of some material. Which material? A chair, it can be made with a steel, steel or metal chair. Yes, it is. Right? In earlier days, the chairs were made out of steel. Steel chairs used to be there. So, nowadays we get all plastic chairs. So, chair is an object which can be made either with steel or metal or plastic. And you know one more thing, from ancient times the furniture, it used to be made with wood, 
you can find a chair made with wood even right so a chair it can be made with a material steel plastic wood of course you have certain glass chairs are also but very rare but a glass is also used to make some chairs some kind of furniture some teapots and chairs where you, in which you can sit even okay so one object can be made with different type of materials right it doesn't mean that an object is made with only one kind of material one object can be made with so many materials let us go to the next one a pen so pen olden days wooden pens right then we have plastic pen pens we have metal pens also right book book is made up of paper of course books are made up of plastics also plastic paper is also available very rare so bed what i mean is that cot it is made up of wood furniture is basically made up of wood but nowadays we have metal cots also steel furniture powder coated steel furniture you might be seeing the big beds made up of iron grills and all that is made up of metal a table table is made up of wood basically and a table is made up of plastic you can find plastic tables and a table is made up of steel or metal so now you see that an object can be made up of more than one material right a chair is either made up of a steel or a glass or plastic or wood a pen book bed table likewise you can make a list of items and you can just think with how many types of materials that particular item can be made or it is made right so here we found the relation that an object can be made with more than one type of material we have one more relation to be identified that is one material can be used to make so many objects let us see so now let us see that a material can be used to make so many objects in the previous case we have seen an object is made by different materials a chair can be made by wood or steel or plastic in the same way here if you see the wood it can be used to make so many objects so you might be knowing that objects in earlier days they used to uh, use wood to make all the objects most of the objects even now in many of the countries they use wood to make their houses even so all the furniture all the furniture can be made with wood and wood is used to make boats and ships and uh, it is used to make the furniture and it is used to make bridges wooden bridges and the wood is used to make houses apart from this so many items are made household items kitchenware what not so many things are made out of wood if you go to any hill stations or pilgrim places where there are some hilly areas and forests nearby forest you can see the tribals they'll be selling so many items that are made up of wood small boxes small bowls bowls and uh, so many ornamental things uh, decorative things artifacts all these are made up of wood so wood is used to make n number of things the next one is paper paper is used to make all kind of books and news magazines books magazines and uh, to print the notes currency notes so all this the paper is used calendars magazines books all these are made up of paper leather leather is used to make sofas leather cloths leather jackets and all leather jerkins shoes and chappal moreover belts handbags wallets so all these are made up of leather the leather is used in making the sofas the covering of the seat covers for the vehicles for the cars and bikes so there also the leather is used and plastic 
So what not you can make everything with plastics, right? So plastic is used to make any kind of thing here. Nowadays we see that the food is adulterated with plastic rice and plastic eggs also. So that means plastic is used to make everything, everything, every item can be made with a plastic, right? You can build any number of things with plastic. So that is the nature, the property of the plastic. So which it can be molded or turned to any kind of material. So plastic is used to make all kind of materials. So you can use a household, you can, we can make furniture, we can make uh, office or business items, office items. So, so many things. Cotton, it is used to make cloths, right. So likewise here we identify that different materials they are used to make a number of things wood is used to make so many things paper is used to make so many things that means one material is used to make so many kind of objects so there is a link between objects and materials right so now we will go into the further details of sorting the materials right children now let us see the properties of materials so why do we need to know the property of a material right so you need some object for a, a specific purpose so you are making one object one item to do a specific task you should see that the item it should have some certain properties to do the job for example you wanted to hit a nail into the wall you wanted to push a nail into the wall to push the nail what kind of thing you need you need something which is hard, right? You need a hammer because it is heavy enough and it is having the weight so by that you can hit the nail into the wall. So you are looking for a property in the hammer that is heaviness, hard and heavy so by that you can push the nail into the wall. So you wanted to hold some water. You wanted to hold some water so you need a container. So, are you going to make the container with a paper, paper container, you hold some water, will it stay there? No. Are you going to make a bag container made out of cotton cloth, some container to hold the water, is it possible? No. You need some material to make the container to hold the water. So, that material it should have the property of holding the water, it should not allow the water to flow down. You can take a plastic container, you can take a metal container, steel container, aluminum container, wooden container, so anything that which can hold the water. So you need to look at the properties of the material before you make some object, right? The purpose is important. You are going to make a pillow. What is the purpose here? Pillow is for proper rest, a smooth resting object. It is a resting object to put back at the back of your head, a pillow. So what is the property there you look for? It should be soft. So which material do you choose? If you choose iron, so you, you choose iron to make the pillow. It, it does not serve the purpose. You feel so hard to keep the iron pillow below your head, right? So what material you need, you look for? You look for a smooth and soft material, you can take cotton. So the cotton wool is filled in the cotton cloth and a pillow is made, it is very soft. So the purpose is important. So for the purpose to achieve a specific task, to conduct a specific job, the object should be made with a appropriate material, right, okay. So we wanted to cook something there on the stove, you need a utensil to cook the food. Can you use a cloth utensil? No. Can you use a paper utensil? No. Can you use a wooden utensil? Wooden is hard enough to hold the kind of things in that. A wooden container, a wooden utensil can hold the things, but you can't cook because the wood catches the fire. So you need a container, you need a utensil which does not catch fire, which allows you to cook the vegetables or whatever you wanted to cook in that. So that container should be made out of some kind of metal. So that is good. Right. So in that way, 
to best make use of the things and materials we need to know the properties of the materials once we know the property of a material we can make best use of that material to make different objects right the people the scientists they study the property of materials so on basing the property of the material they will suggest this material is good to make this this material is good to make this copper is a good conductor so use the copper to make wires copper is a good conductor so to make the utensils bottom with copper so by that they can catch the heat quickly plastic is a good insulator so use the plastic insulation to the wires likewise by studying the properties of a material it can be best used to make various objects now let's see how to study the properties how can we study the properties right we use our common sense with the basic senses what we have you take some material you feel with your hand how its texture you press it and see whether it is hard or soft you see ab observe that how it looks whether it is rough or whether it is soft whether it is shiny having any shining glitter by this physical observation or examination you can note down certain properties of the material of course you can study the complete properties by certain physical and chemical experiments by that you can know what are the complete properties of the material but just by physical examination just by observing it you can notify notice so many things the first one is appearance how it looks you are given a sponge you press the sponge it is soft you are given a brick it is hard a brick is hard you are given an iron block a block made of iron it's very very hard right so you have observed the surface first thing appearance you are observing the appearance right you are given a piece of iron a piece of aluminum a piece of copper iron aluminum copper so just you have uh, seen their physical appearance they are look they look different iron it looks little black in color sometimes it get rusted and orange color aluminum is having that silvery appearance and copper is having that red shiny appearance the colors are different and their appearance is different even though they appear dissimilar there is some similarity what is that similarity just you take a chisel or any sharp thing and cut the iron wire or aluminum sheet or copper sheet if you cut it at the edges you can find they are glowing there is a glaze called as luster that property is called as luster so this is the property which is specific to metals these three are called metals metals they have the luster if you take a sand paper and if you scratch the iron aluminum and copper if you rub on the surface of this iron aluminum and copper all the three will shine it's the luster right so it is the similarity among these three so metals they have a property called as luster if you take any metallic sheet and cut it on the edges you can see the luster so by appearance you can come to know that yes it is a metal by seeing the luster you can say it is a metal yes it's a metal something you found it you don't know what it is just you scratch it and see that yes it's a metal first thing you can identify it is a metal right if it is not a metal if it is some chalk or mud it cannot give the luster so by the appearance we can identify what kind of material it is so it's a property here we found a property of the material metals they have a property called as luster and metals they have other properties also metals you can make them into sheets metal can be made into sheets metal items are made metal jewelry is made metal utensils are made so metal can be made into sheets metal can be dragged into thin wires this is also the property aluminum wire is available copper wire is available 
सिल्वर वायर इज अवेलेबल गोल्ड वायर इज अवेलेबल अल्युमिनियम वायर इज अवेलेबल आयरन वायर इज अवेलेबल कैन यू फाइंड अ वुडन वायर नो राइट सो दिस मेटल्स कैन बी ड्रैग्ड इन टू वायर्स दे कैन बी मेड इन टू शीट्स विच कैन बी बेंड एंड मोल्डेड टू डिफरेंट शेप्स सो दीज आर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर मेटीरियल्स मेटल्स द सेकेंड पार्ट हार्डनेस और सॉफ्टनेस ऑल्सो अलाउज अस टू नो मोर अबाउट द मेटीरियल यू टेक आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट इफ यू आर गिवेन ए स्पॉन्ज यू प्रेस इट इट्स वेरी सॉफ्ट राइट टेक ए चॉक प्रेस इट अफकोर्स इट इज हार्ड बट इट इज नॉट वेरी हार्ड यू कैन प्रेस हार्डली टू मेक इट इन टू पाउडर ए चॉक पीस सो यू कैन कंसिडर इट एज सॉफ्ट नॉट वेरी हार्ड बट इफ यू टेक ए मेटल रोलर ए स्टील रोलर ए स्टील रॉड प्रेस इट इट्स वेरी हार्ड राइट सो यू कॉन्ट डिफॉर्म और चेंज इट शेप सो बाई द अदर प्रॉपर्टी वेदर द ऑब्जेक्ट इज हार्ड और सॉफ्ट ऑल्सो यू कैन गेस और एस्टिमेट द नो द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ मेटीरियल सो दैट इज ऑल्सो वन प्रॉपर्टी हार्डनेस और सॉफ्टनेस सो इन दिस वे बाई द फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन जस्ट बाई लुकिंग विथ योर आईज बाई टचिंग विथ योर हैंड्स बाई प्रेसिंग बेंडिंग बाई डूइंग ऑल दीज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दैट इज कॉल्ड फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन फिजिकल ऑब्जर्वेशन यू कैन नोटिस सो मेनी प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द मेटीरियल बट हाउ डू वी नो द कंप्लीट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ अ मेटीरियल वी कैन नो इट बाय केमिकल एंड फिजिकल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स यू कैन टेक अ मेटीरियल यू कैन हीट इट एंड सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग दैट इज एन अनदर लेवल ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट राइट यू डोंट परफॉर्म इट एट होम जस्ट आई एम टेलिंग यू एंड वी कैन डिजॉल्व इट इन सम केमिकल्स एंड सी वॉट इज हैपनिंग हाउ इट इज रिएक्टिंग विथ अदर केमिकल्स सो लाइक वाइज दे विल मेक अ कंप्लीट लिस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर material so as you go on to the higher classes you will come to know how to explore the complete properties of these materials so let us see the another important property of materials is solubility whether the material is soluble in water or not right so here we are going to check whether the material is soluble or not so we can check solid liquid gaseous materials for their solubility whether they are dissolving in water or not solid material but to know the solubility of the solid the solid should be in the form of a powder powder form powder a so powdered form solid can be easily tested for its solubility so for this ex experiment or activity you need to take a glass of water a half filled glass of water half filled so in this half filled glass of water let us begin with the solids what are the solids take sugar salt sawdust chalk powder so these five items let us consider so take one by one first take a spoon of sugar and mix it in the water let us see stir it thoroughly and see that what happens salt take one more not in the same one take another beaker or another glass half filled with water or full glass of water you can add one spoon of uh, salt see that and use the sawdust and chalk powder so here we have taken four items so what will you observe in your activity when you have added sugar it gets completely dissolved in the water because all sugar is a soluble substance sugar dissolves in the water completely we know that we always do that you mix a spoon of sugar in your milk and coffee tea and drink it so do you find sugar while drinking no it is dissolved in the milk it dissolves in the water even the same with the salt you are using salt to making your different preparations you can't find the salt separately it is mixed up with the preparation right you are making rasam you are adding some salt salt is mixed up with the rasam you can't find it separately just you are enjoying the taste that's all the salt is dissolved in the rasam so salt dissolves in water now you have taken sawdust a spoon of sawdust is dissolved in the water so you stirred it thoroughly and you waited for some time what happened do you think that the sawdust dissolves in the water no 
So the sawdust is insoluble. It does not dissolve in the water. Right? So now we are noticing the property of the material. Sugar, its property, soluble. Sugar, it is soluble in water. Sawdust, insoluble in water. Sand, insoluble in water. Chalk powder, insoluble in water. Salt, soluble in water. Baking soda, soluble in water. So likewise, you can make a list of things that are soluble in water and insoluble in water. So beforehand here, appearance and hardness, there we have seen a physical examination. Now we are going for some kind of experimentation. Okay, of course, this is a very simple experiment, taking a glass of water and doing all this. But even then, this is considered as an experiment. So with this experiment, we are finding more and more properties of the material. So this is about the solid. And then how about the liquid? Shall we have any test for liquids? Shall we see the solubility of uh, some liquids? Now let us see the solubility of liquids in water. Again, we have taken a glass with water. Then you have taken a spoon of vinegar and mixed it in the water. And one more glass of water, add some lemon juice. See that, add some mustard oil, coconut oil, kerosene. Do you think all these things dissolve in water? Are they soluble in water? Right? So generally, more technically, we use the term miscibility, whether they are miscible with the water or not. If you add vinegar, if you add vinegar to a glass of water, you will find that the vinegar dissolves so quickly in the water. You cannot see vinegar separately in the water. It disappears. That means it dissolves in the water. Whereas if you see the lemon juice even, if you add lemon juice, it dissolves in the water. You can't see it separately. It gets mixed up with the water. Right? So here you can say that lemon juice is soluble in water. Vinegar is soluble in water. And take mustard oil, a spoon of mustard oil and put it in the water. And see, will it dissolve in the water? No. Oils do not dissolve in water because their densities are different. If you put some oil in water, what happens? The oil, it floats on the water. The density of the oil is less compared to water. So it floats on the surface of the water. You can't mix them. You try, but you can't mix them. It again comes back and floats on the surface. And even the same, it goes with the coconut oil because I already told you all oils are same. So mustard oil has like that coconut oil. The coconut oil also does not dissolve in the water. It also floats. And kerosene, even kerosene and petrol also do not dissolve in the water. Those are also the products of oil, crude oil. Kerosene is obtained from crude oil. Right? So all liquids do not dissolve in water. So here is the property of, we are studying the property of some liquid materials like vinegar, lemon juice, mustard oil, coconut oil and kerosene. Then how about some gases? Gases. For gases also you can check the solubility whether they dissolve in water or not. All gases do not dissolve in water except a few, except some gases. What are they? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. So we might be enjoying the soft drinks or the carbonated sweetener drinks colas and pepsis which are nothing but they are that is the carbonated sweet water sugar water carbonated carbon dioxide is dissolved in that and generally in the nature there are so many water bodies in which uh, so many organisms fishes and other creatures are living the water it contains oxygen we are breathing the oxygen in the atmosphere we are able to make our living but the organisms or animals living in the water, they need oxygen and they obtain the oxygen from the water in which they are living. So, this statement tells us that the water it has got oxygen, otherwise they wouldn't have lived in that. The animals are living in the water because the water has got oxygen, is dissolved in it. So, oxygen, carbon dioxide, such gases are dissolved in the water. So, solubility is the another property which we can uh, check whether it is soluble or insoluble, whether the object is hard or soft, how the appearance is, whether the object is having luster or not, whether the object is having the property of uh, malleability or ductility. So likewise, all these are the properties of materials which we can explore by physical observation and by experimentation. So now we are going to dis discuss about two more properties, floating or sinking transparency. 
So, these things are also the two properties of materials that help us in making certain objects or things for different purposes. Float or sink, how does this help? You wanted to make a submarine. Submarine, you know what is a submarine? So, do you want it to be floating on the water or going down into the water? For sure, it should go down into the water. It should be submerged. So, it is called submarine. So, you should take the material which makes the submarine to sink down, heavy metal is used. You wanted to make some object which should be floating on the water, you want to be build a boat. So, with what you will make the boat? With wood. So, by that it floats on the water. So, certain materials they float on the water. You see the very light things, the dried leaves they float on the water. Grass, dried grass it floats on the water. Wooden objects, paper, this kind of things float on the water. Certain things they sink in the water, right. So, if you wanted to make an object which should go down to the water, then it should be heavy. You should select such material to make the object. So, there is a big ship and for the ship an anchor is needed to hold the ship in position. So, the anchor should be very heavy. It should immediately drown in the water. Right. If they make an anchor, if they make an anchor with wood. So, like this an anchor, if this is made with wood, it will float. There is no use. Right. But you may get one doubt, the ship, it should float on the water, but why it is made with steel, iron. Of course, even though it is made with steel and iron, because it should withstand the pressure of water. So, that is the reason it is made with. But even then, it is made in a different shape. It is another property. So, by that, because of the shape, it is not sinking. Otherwise, if it breaks, if there is any hole in the ship, it will sink down into the water. Right. So, depending upon the purpose, if you wanted to make something which should be floating on the water, you should select the material which floats on the water like wood, plastic, these kind of things. You wanted to make some object which should drown in the water, you should choose a material which is having the property of heaviness, drowning or immerged in the water. The next one transparency, this is also another property. There are so many advantages of this property, sometimes sometimes disadvantages also, right. So, you are in a glass chamber, you are fighting with your friend. So, sometimes the transparency is an advantage, sometimes the transparency is a problem. See that you are fighting with your brother. So, in a transparent chamber, you are in a transparent chamber, glass chamber, you are fighting. So, definitely you are seen outside, they will catch you that you are fighting, you are hitting. So, because it is seen outside. Sometimes it is advantage you go to showrooms, bike showroom, car showroom, TV showroom. So, there you see that the walls are made out of glasses. So, by that you can see all the items. Because the glass is transparent, the property helps you to see. You need not step into the shop. If you are just passing by the shop, you can see the vehicle inside, car inside, bike inside, refrigerator inside through the glass. Even the dresses, you can easily see that even the toys, you can see them through the glass windows, glass panes, panels. So, the glass helps you to see that. Even if you go to your sweet shop, you can choose which sweet you want. The sweets are not outside, they are not exposed out, but they are in the glass racks made up of glass. So, through glass you can see easily identify this is, this is, this is you want. So, that is the advantage of transparency, right. So, it is another property. If you wanted to make some display of various things, you need to choose a transparent material. Obviously, glass. Sometimes, some, some people they do not want to use glass. They are feared of glass. It may break. So, they want some alternative. They can use acrylic. Acrylic is a plastic kind of thing which looks like glass, but it is not glass. It is unbreakable. Right. So, in such a way, you can Make use of the another property to make your objects or things that is transparency. Some cases it is not completely transparent, semi transparent. Say, for example, if you have a paper, apply some oil to the paper, the paper becomes translucent, 
or semi transparent you can see through the paper but you can't see it clearly what is there on the other side just you can see it roughly or you can see some light with an ordinary paper you can't see that if you apply some oil you can see the light semi transparent certain things they allow the light to pass through them right some items they allow the light to completely pass through them like glass some items they allow the light to par pass partially only half even your body if you take a torch and put the torch and keep your hand like this you can see your hand in red in color that means the light is passing through your cells but it's not completely passing you cannot get the full light on the other side just you can see a red patch it shows that the light is passing partially so this is the property the transparency is the another property of the material by which we can choose the materials the right materials to make the right objects you see your world the right materials are used for construction to construct a house what kind of materials you need you need iron and steel you need bricks you need cement you need sand sand and cement are mixed in a proper proportion to make some concrete the concrete is used to plaster the walls used to attach the bricks so by that the walls are made strengthier right so to make a strong house what is needed good materials good material in the sense the material that you have taken for the house it should serve the purpose it should give the strength it should give proper shape it should give durability it should resist heat it, sh it should resist the cold it should resist the rain it should withstand for years so all the properties they are tested so those materials are used a car is made a bike is made how it is made the car is made by using some steel some glass some plastic some rubber some metals aluminum copper all these metals are used and the car is made so different metals different materials are used for different different purpose by studying their properties which purpose that particular material can serve best that material is used right for the steering wheel of the car you find a rubber glove because it will give you a good grip for the brake pedal of the car there is a rubber beading it will give you a good grip right and you have a glass in front of you while driving because the that glass is transparent so whether you can see the outside traffic at the same time the glass protects you from the dust and rain so just keep all these points by using these points observe the various materials just notice their properties test their properties and their uses just by physical examination as well as by doing simple experiments like solubility and all